and um, I suppose first of all, the way an apology that I'm not going to talk much about technology in my talk. Um, and if you want to talk to me about our technology in more detail, I'm very happy to do so on on standard um, standard 16 of the uh, of the unit there. Um, just picking up very quick um, from the other presenter. So um, you'll see the numbers from Japan. A lot of the group of Japan is about 90 fuel cells. That's what we're doing now in Germany and the UK. Um, and whilst we're still at quite an early stage, um, the fact that they're selling tens of thousands today means that there's no reason why we should be on it. Um, what the technology we work with is SFC. Um, the reason why we're there is that's a part of electrical efficiency. And that very much drives everything that we do. Um, and basically, electricity is a high value product and heat is a low value product and it's less transmissible. Um, and the Any Fuel project was mentioned, which has just had a bit of publicity. Um, we're actually doing something very similar to that, um, but we started a year earlier. Um, so we're doing a project called Soft Pact. Um, and the reason why we're not in Any Fuel is that we feel that uh, the Soft Pact project we're currently doing, um, that's the end of the demonstrations and so forth, it's purely commercial here on in. Um, and I uh, can't resist mentioning in terms of uh, uh, vehicles and, and so forth, our, our approach is to look at recharging electric vehicles with, with uh, our technology rather than taking our fuel cells into the vehicle. Um, and part of the reason for that, on my slightly back of the fact that we have a vehicle, like we get around 25 grams per kilometer CO2, which is Significant compared to uh, where we're looking at all the other things. So, let me know what we really want to talk about today is fuel poverty. And why? Because the whole point of what we're doing is to create electricity more cheaply, fundamentally, it's efficiency, um, it's reducing costs, reducing primary energy use, reducing CO2, yes, but at the end of the day, what people are going to be buying is cost savings. And the nature of our technology means that. Um, we want to apply that to markets where it makes the most difference and also markets where they pay the most for electricity, where the benefits are greatest. And in this, in this country, in the UK, we can pay the highest cost for electricity generally are uh, social, uh, social housing tax. People in fuel poverty generally doesn't have to be social housing, but often it is. Um, as a quick show of hands, who actually knows how much they pay for electricity in terms of how to put all that? And of you, how many of you actually shopped around to get the best price? Just kind of goes to show, even, even for an educated audience, energy is not high on the agenda. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, quickly about us, formed in 1992, um, we, we spent 18 years developing technology, developing products, but like a coming of age. Um, that, that's now, coming, we're now in our 20th year. Um, and therefore we're almost at our 21st birthday and at that point we will be um, uh, seen as fully commercial. Um, we have operations in the UK, Netherlands, Germany and Australia. Um, we have we spent around about 10 million euros in our manufacturing facilities in Germany, which are state of the art, um, and we're capable of generating uh, um, producing around about uh, 10,000 units per year, so we have the capacity to move forward. Um, we have Installation parks across the UK now. Um, that's new in, in 2012, so we can actually deliver. Um, we've been working in the UK, in the UK with Eon since 2006, um, and that's with the software project so that's now going across Europe. Um, and we're in the track of record actually delivering on, on what we say. So, we were launched in 2010, and um, it took almost two years to get the, the MCS. Accreditation, mainly because we have to write a new standard, we are leading the way, and, and the existing standards are not applied to fuel cells. So we've now opened the way, and we'll see other people coming behind us as well.
how are they? If we look at um, where those costs are going for the households, which is the, the markets we're really facing the households and uh, small businesses, then the gas that we'll use can be reduced significantly through insulation measures. Um, some have more liquid heat, um, more liquid treatment, and so forth, that's true, but that, that's easy. The electricity side of things is more difficult. It's very difficult to get to reduce our electricity uses significantly because generally people are already reasonably efficient in what they do. Um, and if we look at the why the costs are increasing, then going forwards, the electricity prices continue to rise. So increasing demand, um, we see electrification of heat, heat pumps are seeing it jump up in electricity demand. We see electrification of transport, um, and which will be done using fuel cells directly in, 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 in vehicles. Which will jump up in demand there, um, which then means that um, the price go up, we can invest more in, in the grid, um, and the whole subsidies low power technologies altogether needs more price increases. On gas, there's, there's more, first of all, it's reducing um, demand, and it is happening due to installation here and in Germany, um, but also getting significant new discoveries. So the price of gas in the medium term is, should be going down. It won't be down in the short term in the UK because of extra contractual reasons when we get to that. But hopefully the next five years will um, And why is it always why electricity is expensive? Because the process of generating it normally use is very wasteful. We lose around about 70% of our energy, primary energy, which is in, in the coal that's getting burnt and stored. The UK system is currently coal led in terms of the electricity generation. If you look at the, over the um, generation statistics, statistics over the last 12 months, you'll see that it's been consistent all the way through. Um, so we end up losing an awful lot of the energy before we get there, and that's one of the reasons why the emissions of electricity are used so high at the moment. Um, and that's why if you put an electric vehicle on, on the um, on grid power, you're looking at a much higher um, grounds for plants than you would do if you were using it. What we're doing is taking generation into the house. So we're looking at putting generation into the house, taking fuel there, there's no distribution losses, either in the fuel delivery or in the um, delivery of electricity. Uh, and we have a very high electrical conversion efficiency. Because we use SF fuel cells and because we focused from the very beginning on past electrical efficiency. So we do achieve 60% electrical efficiency at the plug in your house. And then we can catch the waste heat hot water. And the hot water you use every day, or as most people use every day, um, and therefore we will run our fuel cell continuously. So as well as having very high efficiency and low cost of electricity, we also have very high levels of generation, even though the, the nominal capacity is quite it's still only uh, 1.5 to 2 kilowatts. Importantly, it's also all remote controlled, so enabling the um, um, so very simply, more power for less fuel, primary savings, better CO2 savings, and lower cost of this. Um, we're creating more power, we have less heat, so we don't have to worry about um, dumping heat, uh, continuous operation, so we're generating as much uh, electricity as possible from the fuel. Uh, um, but generating on size means that we're avoiding all those big costs. So we're, we're avoiding, if we're generating a large scale, we're getting to the grid. So there's large scale ones in the South Korea, so it's great. But they're competing against wholesale price electricity. We want to be competing against residential prices. So instead of being told 14 pence to a in, in homes, they're competing against 4 to 5 pence wholesale price. Um, and what we're doing with um, and we're we'll looking at these on a share basis. Because we're generating around about four times the average house users, it means that being to one house and looking at the current market parameters and feed the town so in the UK, you don't get value for the energy you export. You should do, we don't. So we, in, in uh, breaking up the definition of what the market is like, um, if we do it on a share basis, then we avoid the um, waste of value. In an individual house, we don't run a peak on an electric vehicle. Um, and on an average 
places over the year, you still end up probably um, exporting to one uh, We like to work on a shared basis, and that shared basis works particularly well in a social housing context where the fact of clients are not owners, um, and where therefore all they really want to do is have peace and power. They're not interested in buying a box. Um, so small blocks of flats is very much where we're looking at. Thank you. 